Hi there and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be reviewing the Sonoff Cam Slim. Now in this video I'm going to basically be unboxing it, I'm going to be uh, setting it up in the Ewe Link app, installing it in my kitchen and then getting it into Home Assistant. Uh, but before all of that let's find out how you can get yours. So if you're interested in getting a Sonoff Cam Slim you can order them direct from Sonoff's website which is ITEAD cc uh, i'll put a link to that in the video description below and also if you want to use uh, my discount code and get yourself 10 percent off then that's shown at the bottom of the screen right now and i'll also put that in the video description as well right so this is the sonoff cam slim full hd 1080p camera uh, there's quite a few details on the back of the box such as uh, IR night vision, two-way audio, motion detection. There's an alerts feature, you can set up smart scenes and the support for cloud storage, as well as it's got uh, the features of the RTSP protocol to get uh, feeds from it. Uh, the input is five volts at one amp. It's a type C connection. As I said before, it's 1080p and on the Wi-Fi it's at 2.4 gigahertz. And there's many other items in the box that we'll have a look at in a second. It also ties in quite nicely with the other items that Sonoff provide. So we've got connections to uh, wireless door sensors, smart LED bulbs, uh, smart switches and smart plugs can also interact with the camera and uh, many other kind of products. So let's have a look inside. So we've got the face of the camera looking at us in the box. If we take that off and we can see the whole camera itself. Um, at the moment it's kind of against, so it's got a base here where you can put the base out and just angle the camera wherever you want it to be kind of angled. Uh, when I'm going to be putting it on the wall, you can have it on the wall like that, against the wall sort of facing out. And there are several ways that you can attach it to the back here. You can take off this part, there's a little hole here, you can get a screwdriver in here and lever this back plate off. And then what they provide you with is some screws, although you could probably just use your own. There's some raw plugs in here and some screws so you can screw this to the wall and then snap it back into place so it fits flush with wherever you, wherever you want to put it. Um, the other alternative that they supply you with is a sticker on the back so you could position that 3M sticker on the back there and then stick it to wherever you want to. Uh, we have got a guide in here, a small guide, and then we've got the cable. As I said before, there's no power um, adapter in here. You need to order that separately. We've got an angled um, USB-C on here. Uh, it's not overly long, but I guess it's probably around just over a metre. Although we'll have to have a look at that. Um, for the UK order a type G plug I've kind of ripped this box already open a bit but all you get inside here you don't get another cable you just actually get the white kind of USB plug to use with it so make sure you order the correct one for your country and you can order it on the same screen as when you order the camera from the back of the unit it's not too much to say. It's got a small reset button on the back here, pin sized. Um, and then we've got the USB-C connection on the back as well. Uh, this is a kind of a housing for the camera. This can be taken out. And then inside here, you can actually access um, the uh, micro SD card slot as well. So I've taken it from outside of its housing. It's quite easy to do. You just need to touch those little clips on the back of the housing and then you've got the item out and here reveals the top of the uh, micro SD card slot on the top um, of the camera. So I've got an old Piper NV camera on the wall in the kitchen up here uh, and if you want to see, um, I talked about this coming to the end of life, if you want to see that video I'll show it on the screen now and put it in the description below. Uh, but this camera is, uh, is kind, of, kind of end of support now and it's not working at all via the app. 
It was quite a good camera, had a fisheye kind of lens on it. Um, so you could see most of the room and part of the ceiling as well. So I'm gonna replace it and put the Sonoff Cam Slim on the wall instead. Uh, the power cable just runs along the top here and then down into that cupboard uh, for the power. Um, I'm hoping it's gonna be long enough, that cable, but I don't think it will be. So I might have to put like a USB extension on it um, to get it kind of working. But I just need to get that off the wall and then get the new camera in place. Although I'm gonna set up the camera, make sure it works okay before I put it up there. So here's the Cam Slim compared to the Piper MV. Obviously a lot smaller, but if you can kind of imagine it right against the wall there, that's where I'll kind of have it with the USB cable kind of trailing out of it. Unfortunately, you're going to see a bit more of the cable coming out um, because the um, cable will sort of show where my thumb is coming down here, unfortunately, but it should work okay. One other thing I didn't realize was that the back plate is magnetic. So here it is on the front of the fridge. Um, so that's quite useful. So if you want to attach it to anything metallic, it is magnetic. Right, so let's get it added to the eWe Link app. Okay, so I'm just going to add a device in here. And say next. We're just searching for the device now. There you go, it's found it straight away. So I'm going to do plus on that. So now I'm going to connect to the device. Please use mobile phone for Wi-Fi configuration. So we've got it connected now. It's now connecting to the device. Please wait for Wi-Fi connecting. Please wait for internet connecting. Internet connected. Welcome to use cloud camera. It's quite helpful having the voices, uh, the voice come through. So it's now registering the device. It's reconnected to the router. It's registering the device to the cloud. There we go. And here it is on the top of the screen. And it's connecting to the device and there it is. Now it's a bit blurry because I've still got the uh, wrapper on the front, the film still on the front of it, but I just wanted to see what was actually in here. Um, peel that off. Here you go. That's a bit brighter. So that's not too bad. So we've got a live view on here. We've now put it into HD mode. It was on standard definition. There's a slight delay in it, which I would expect got various things on here now we can share service uh, history motion detection take a snapshot the camera etc uh, etc et so that seems to work quite well so we've got the name in here the current version it's already on the latest version um, we can assign a location we've got cloud storage in here we've got the indicator on the front we can turn that on or off uh, motion detection on or off, local recording, I haven't put a micro SD card in yet, you can rotate it around depending on how you set it up, 
and there are more settings in there got night vision set on auto as well and we've got the speaker volume it's on low the mic volumes on high we've got the rtsp in here so you can enable that if you want to which i will do through home assistant and then we can sync the time and restart the camera as well Right, now we've got the install in the app and the camera all working. Let's go finish the install in the kitchen. So the camera's in place. Um, it was quite easy to do. I just put one screw in the back where there was already a screw hole. And then just uh, clicked it back into place. Um, I've tried a micro SD card, uh, but I only had a two gig and it wants bigger than a two gig. So I'm going to have to find another one. Uh, it seems to work pretty well. I'll show you the screen in a minute. Uh, the cable, I've just run it along. I had to screw a slightly bigger hole in here. But under here, I've just used a command strip um, to put that extension in there and then run the cable in there and through the back. So it's quite well hidden. And it's nice that you can tilt it up and down as well so I can uh, get rid of the kind of ceiling in the image and just get actually most of the room inside. So this is the view of the kitchen uh, in the daytime. So it's not a bad angle and view. And this is what it looks like in uh, night vision mode. So it's still pretty clear at night. So it looks quite a good camera. Now the camera's in place. Let's see if we can get it into Home Assistant. Right, so I'm in Home Assistant. Um, I'm going to come into the generic camera and I'm going to add a new device. Now on here, I've basically created a new stream within the uh, Ewe Link app on the RTSP screen. You have to sort of save it and then it gives you the full RTSP link to type in with the IP address and your password in it, etc. So I'm going to basically just um, choose that and then type that in now. And then from here, we should be able to go to a test screen and add a new card, edit, add a card, and then add a picture entity and then change the entity to the IP address on the camera. It should come up. Let's just edit that so it's live save it again there we are so one two so you can see a bit of delay in this three it's not too bad though so in summary then do i like the little camera yeah i quite like the cam slim um, it's not a bad little camera to be honest loads of different um, places you can actually put it um, with it being magnetic um, with a stand being on it um, takes a local sort of micro sd card although i haven't set that up and got that going yet um, i do like it i had a couple of kind of issues with it really uh, one was it did go a little bit pink on the screen once when i was kind of installing it in the kitchen uh, it might be a bit of a worry it does get a little bit warm um, I'm worried about um, the micro SD card uh, being kind of annihilated and having to replace that loads of times if it gets too hot but we'll have to see as I haven't put one in it yet so I can't comment on that uh, I'll have to order a new micro SD card uh, to use that but it integrates really well with Home Assistant um, and just being HD just full to 1080 it seems to be okay um, the image is not too bad I don't need 2k or 4k at the moment for like a home kind of indoor camera and the field of view looks okay as well in the kitchen uh, but thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video if you did give us a like don't forget to leave a comment as well below and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and I'll see you soon